Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, and by now, you should know that on this channel, I aim to bring you everything, and I literally mean everything, that you need to know about the Pokemon trading card game. And by now, you should also know that sometimes that involves bringing you videos about cards that we've had for a while, but we're not talking about very much. And cards that I have decided, and it's often people helping me out being lovely, that I need to have another look at. And today it's Sylveon EX. Now we looked at Mewtwo recently, and I suggested that maybe you should be playing a little bit more Mewtwo in your life, and I explained how it's good against Boswell, etc, etc. And Sylveon GX has been its own deck for a little bit of a while now. And generally, you use Magical Ribbon to search for any free cards. And you grab stuff like Crushing Hammer and just run your opponent out of resources. Generally speaking, you tech in kind of a 101 Gardevoir line with Rare Candy. Because when you're using Magical Ribbon, it's actually easy to get this working. And then you're off. And that's the deck. Sylveon EX really hasn't seen any play, but the lovely ADVGYM over on Twitter has pointed out, and I was going to get to Sylveon, but still, when you guys are nice enough to tweet out ideas at me, I'd like to give you a little bit of cred. And he said, and I agree entirely, because this was on my list of videos to make, with the rise of Dragon Pokemon recently, which is only going to get bigger in the future, don't you think Sylveon EX could end up being a secret tech at Worlds? And the short answer is, oh my goodness, yes. Now, Sylveon is one of those weird Pokemon that only actually came out in the Generation set. So we got two copies of it, two artworks, both of which are beautiful. Although I actually prefer the non-full art myself. Both of which have Eevee in the artwork. And... Well, it means if you bought a bunch of generations, you probably got these lying around. If you didn't, you might have to try and go and source these. And essentially, it's got 170 HP, which is low straight off the bat. And it's got a weakness to metal. But the thing about metal Pokemon at the moment is you've got Duskmane Necrozma, who either one-hit KOs or hits for 60. Well, it's going to one-hit KO regardless of weakness. And if it's hitting you for 60, then it's not KOing even with the weakness. So you're good to go, to be perfectly honest. The one particular issue we could have is the Cabalion from Steam Siege, which can be a little bit of a pain after you've taken a couple of prizes. But you'll have to play around it. So not great HP. It's down there with Tapu Lele, which isn't great. But then again, you've got a nice weakness. And the retreat cost of two is kind of annoying. There's not much we can do about that. And it's got a resistance to darkness, which is actually kind of irrelevant, to be honest, because Zoroark GX wouldn't be getting a one-hit KO anyway. With a full bench, it would be doing 120. Goes down to 100, so it wouldn't be getting a one-hit KO anyway. And it is getting a two-hit KO anyway. So actually, the weakness doesn't really matter, and the resistance doesn't really matter. What really matters here is the first attack dress-up. 30 damage. If this Pokemon has a tool card attached to it, this attack does 30 more damage and by now i'm assuming that most of you have figured out that the tool we are particularly talking about here is choice band see once you've got choice band attached you're now doing 90 damage 30 plus 30 because there is a tool plus 30 because that tool just so happens to be choice band which doubled for weakness does 180 weakness you say See, the thing is, at the moment, we've basically, we're heading into Worlds, and I am utterly convinced that Worlds are going to be three big decks. First of all, you got Boswell. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, Boswell's a little bit annoying, because it's not weak to Fairy. Having said that, now, Sylveon EX is rotating right after Worlds, so we really are looking at the Worlds format here. After Worlds, this is completely irrelevant. So we're still going to have Mew from Fates Collide. And the great thing about Mew from Fates Collide is it can copy Sylveon's attack for just a double colorless energy with a choice band. Now Mew is doing 90 damage, but now Mew is hitting for a psychic weakness, which means you are hitting weakness against Buzzwall. And then, of course, the other decks are Malamar decks, which are either going to be played with Ultra Necrozma, 
which is a dragon Pokemon, ergo weak to fairy. Sylveon's hitting for weakness. Or Necrozma, which is a psychic Pokemon weak to psychic, i.e. weak to Mew. And the other big deck I'm expecting is Rayquaza GX, which is weak to fairy, i.e. weak to Sylveon. My point here is that we're basically looking at four big main attackers at Worlds, all of which are either weak to fairy or to psychic, meaning that you can either be taking advantage of this with Sylveon or with Mew while copying Sylveon's attack. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Are you starting to see why I like this so gosh darned much? It essentially is one Pokemon that gives you a chance to hit for weakness against all of the good Pokemon in the format. Now, the other thing I need to stress here, and this is very important, this is for two colourless energy. So this isn't like, oh, you can play it if you're playing fairy energy anyway. No, 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 no. This fits in very nicely to any deck. Now, if you're playing double colorless energy, that's wonderful. If you're not playing double colorless energy, that's a little bit of a pain. But we can get around this. It's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, you'll have to get two energy on there rather than one. Now, at this stage, there's probably a whole bunch of you sitting there going, we'll see your maths is off. Or math is off if you're American. Because you're talking about hitting 180 with a choice band. And both Buzzwall and Ultra Necrozma have 190. You're 10 damage short. Well, the good news is, in the world format, we are going to have Celestial Storm. Legal for tournament play. And Celestial Storm is bringing us Forbidden Shrine. Forbidden Shrine... Allows you to just put one damage count dot on each Pokemon EX and GX between turns. Now, admittedly, this will put one damage counter on Sylveon EX between turns. But you don't really care. You're investing a single energy attachment, hopefully, into this Pokemon. And you're taking two prizes off of a main attacker. So this might make it slightly easier for your opponent to KO you... But it doesn't matter, because you're using a single energy tech, hopefully against a multi-energy main attacker. You're still winning that exchange, even if Forbidden Shrine is hurting you. I think Sylveon EX could have a good run at Worlds. I think it should be a well-played tech at Worlds. Like I say, there's a very narrow window. It's not really great until we get Celestial Storm out and Rayquaza comes around. And then by the time September hits, it goes away. But you potentially, between this and Mew, and you will have to play one or two copies of Mew, and you will have to play Forbidden Shrine. And I know that's starting to sound awkward, but you're then hitting weakness probably against the four best main attackers at the World Championships. I'm totally okay with this. This sounds absolutely fine by me. And I know you've got to have a choice band, but come on. You should be playing four choice band in most decks anyway at the moment doesn't really matter. We are not going to be looking at Sylveon EX's second attack, Precious Ribbon. 100 damage, move a fairy energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench, and heal 50 from that Pokemon. I mean, it's fine in a fairy deck, it will one-hit KO Ultra Necrozma, and it will one-hit KO Rayquaza, but it, it's just awkward and expensive, and don't worry your pretty little heads about it. Now, you might be thinking, Ross, surely there's a better option than Sylveon EX here. I don't know if there's a better option, but there's one other option. It's the Dedenne from Forbidden Light. Two colourless energy, 30 damage. If you've got a lightning Pokemon on your bench, it does 30 more. Then you add a choice band and it goes up to 90. Forbidden Shrine, you get all the key KOs. And it's a basic, so it can still be copied with Mew. And this is probably going to be the biggest barrier to Sylveon EX being really good. Dedenne is a non-GX basic that is arguably better. The thing is, would you rather have a lightning Pokemon on your bench? It's probably going to be Tapu Koko for the free retreat and the flying flip attack. 20 to all of your opponent's Pokemon for a double colorless, which you're going to have to be playing for Dedenne anyway. But then again, you're taking up the bench space. And then you've got two bench spaces for the one Pokemon. And then if you're playing one of each, one could be prized, so it can get awkward. Or would you rather play Sylveon and just find a choice band? There are big arguments for both. I love the non-GX of Dedenne, but it takes up more space in your deck. You've got to find both of them at once. 
and it takes up more space on your bench. I'll leave it up to you. But the point is, they're fairy Pokemon, so they're hitting weakness against Rayquaza and Ultra Necrozma. They're basic, so they can be copied with Mew, at which point you're hitting weakness on regular Necrozma and Buzzwole. I expect them to be probably the four biggest attackers at the World Championships. And yes, I would like to be able to hit all of them for weakness. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. I think Sylveon EX could be good. And let's face it, Sylveon's adorable and like everybody loves it. But I want to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at Lawasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.